Hi, it's nice to see you again. I, I, uh, I didn't intend to make this video tonight, but um, I was online working on my script for an interesting documentary about uh, my cosplay. And uh, it's going to be really interesting. Uh, it's the first of hopefully several documentaries, uh, long, in-depth documentaries about aspects of my life, like, uh, well, this one is cosplay. Another one is about uh, perhaps uh, my interest in film. And another one may be about um, my Madonna screenplay project and so forth. I had done videos about some of these topics before that I've since privatized, and maybe it's a good thing. Um, I haven't deleted anything I've created. Uh, they still exist, uh, but I've advanced since then in my technique, and I've advanced in terms of the thought that would be put into these videos, and, uh, and certain other reasons. Uh, I. I've kept them, I've privatized them, and so forth. So maybe in the future, um, maybe I can create a separate channel for them. But right now, I'm putting those topics and perhaps other ones into longer length documentaries. So I was doing that, and while I was doing it, my friend had texted me about uh, Star Wars, and he was watching, I don't know which episode he was watching, and I. By the way, I have a, a video somewhat recently uploaded. It's in the channel. Look through it. Uh, it's called How to Watch Star Wars. And um, it's maybe an hour and a half or two hours, something like that. Uh, it's really in-depth. <laughs> I'm working my way towards more in-depth discussions because I believe that the topics and the ideas that I express really deserve, uh, really deserve, Full attention, a uh, full, um, full exploration. <laughs> so, okay, so my friend knew that I was interested in Star Wars, and he had seen. He, I know he's seen the first film when it came out. The first film being uh, subsequently called Episode Four: A New Hope, back in 1977. And I don't know if he had seen any of the others. He does own them. I don't know if he, he probably doesn't own Rogue One, but he owns uh, the prequel trilogy and the uh, the original trilogy. So he said he couldn't really get into it, and of course, wow, this is my opportunity to mention how it's a uh, an allegory to uh, the Roman Empire uh, developing out of Republic and uh, Nazi Germany um, becoming a dictatorship out of it's Weimar Republic, and so forth. Um, and this, and there's so many different avenues. Uh, it's uh, an homage to 1930s and 40s science fiction films like Flash Gordon, uh, which coincidentally um, came out in 1980 after the original um, Star Wars film. And then I, I don't, I would hazard a guess it came out before just before it came out in the same year as the second Star Wars film um, but so he he then watched Attack of the Clones and he said this is basically for kids something like it seems like it's good for kids and there's so much more to it there's way more to it um, I mean I devoted like two and a half hours or something to a video on how to watch Star Wars so that that tells you something um, so Thankfully, uh, fortunately, he said maybe because um, he's tired and so forth, he'll he'll explore them again soon. I explained to him that uh, there are two, there are three trilogies. There's uh, episodes one, two, and three, which is the prequel trilogy. There's four, five, and six, which is the original trilogy. And I didn't mention the other trilogy, but I mentioned that. Um, it's not just a series of films. It's uh, it, there are two or three trilogies, and that it's better to watch the original trilogy, episodes four, five, and six, because um, they that would preserve certain surprises. I can think of three 
um, twist surprises, uh, twist revelations. Uh, now, one of them is very popular, and every any anybody who hasn't seen Star Wars, probably at least almost all of them, probably would know what this one is. But there are two other twists, um, and it's these are not movies that you just watch. And I'm sure George Lucas intended this on purpose. These are not movies you simply just watch once and that's it. Uh, you can watch them several times and gain new meaning each and every time. There are different layers to each of these Star Wars films, even the prequels. I mean, you, the, the prequels are their own. The um, tone of the prequels is different from the tone of the original trilogy. And uh, in a lot of sense, the prequel trilogy presumes that you've already seen the original trilogy, even though they chronologically take place later on. The original trilogy takes place later on. Um, so there's a lot of interest in that. So, um, so I had this in mind, and I posted this on Facebook, and I figured, hey, you know, I'm I posting these ideas all in this Facebook post. I might as well um, share it with you, and there's a a ready-made YouTube video right on hand. So let me just um, read what I have here. And keep in mind, this is a rough draft. I mean, you know, this is spur of the moment, um, so it's not completed really. But I had one of those moments that's, well, existential thought might sort of describe it. A friend texted me that he was trying to understand the value of Star Wars. He was watching it, then watching Attack of the Clones. Ugh. Watching four to six is easier for a newcomer. Then, on the drive to work a moment ago, I thought about my statement that Darth Vader was a personal embodiment of Germany becoming mechanized. I thought of Nietzsche's concept of the Ubermensch. I'd wanted to steer clear of corrupting any conceptualization of how the Nazis used that term. What did he mean? He meaning Nietzsche. Star Wars comments on absolute power corrupting absolutely, and yet it depicts the Force as a benevolent power. My point is that these, and what I meant by that, in case it wasn't clear, is that you have two different uh, concepts about power. You have uh, the dark side of the Force, uh, you have the Emperor and Darth Vader uh, representing the absolute power corrupting absolutely, and yet you have the, the light side of the Force, um, and uh, the depictions about the healthy aspects of it. Um, my point is that these times when I ponder about the deeper meaning that I feel, um, let me read that again. My point is that it's these times when I ponder about the deeper meaning that I feel a presence of a greater existence. It's something that could only be clunky when formulated into words. The way I describe, the way I understand the two Sephirot way atop the Kabbalistic tree of life, way at the top. Um, there are Sephirot, there's a, a Malkut, which would be kingdom at the bottom, and then two, uh, sep actually four Sephirot, and then, a, then there's an abyss, and then above that there are three, three uh, Sephiroth dealing with the mind. Um, and these are the, the two of these three. The, the one in the middle is knowledge. I don't mention that here. <clears throat> um, but the two on either side, the counterpoints. Um, the, way I just, the, the way I understand the two Sephiroth way atop the Kabbalistic tree of life is that Chokmah, wisdom, is something that doesn't have delineation. It's an intuitive image. Its counterpart, Bina, is understanding. This gives form to the thought. How can I adequately translate the thought or the Kabbalistic flow of light from Chokmah to Bina without spilling some? I have felt for a long time their abstract concepts and, and thoughts. <clears throat> this flirts with Carl Jung, I guess. I like to think it also flirts with Plato. Sometimes we happen to tap into this experience. In other words, that, for example, as I was driving to work, sometimes um, we just happen to feel the presence of these abstract concepts flowing into our minds. And we 
feel, well, I deleted this and I reworded it right there, but originally I typed um, a sense of a greater, well, I feel like a greater presence, uh, a greater like unity in the universe, but that didn't seem exactly what I was talking about, what I meant. So I rephrase it as sometimes we happen to tap into this experience. I'm thinking of an episode of Star Trek The Next Generation, which is reminiscent of 2001, A Space Odyssey, and Flowers for Algernon, which is a book, which was made into a movie called Charlie. In the Star Trek episode, an awkward crewman who feels uncomfortable around others becomes, and I'm talking about the episode, uh, namely the episode I didn't mention here, is called The Nth Degree, and it's in the fourth season. Um, an awkward crewman who feels uncomfortable around others becomes exposed to an interstellar machine and both halves of his brain, both hemispheres, uh, communicate more closely than ours typically do. In other words, uh, as a result of this encounter, um, he, both hemispheres of his brain um, start uh, becoming more integrated and uh, they communicate more, they, they're more unified um, and he becomes smarter and uh, things are, are intellectual, what we would call like impossible intellectual challenges uh, seem uh, easy for him. He, be, he gains more confidence. Um, I'm also thinking in terms of the Ubermensch in, with Darth Vader and the concept of slave mentality and master. Uh, by Ubermensch, I don't mean necessarily how the Nazis took Ubermensch or how others have um, interpreted the concept of Ubermensch. I'm talking about the original um, concept uh, by Nietzsche, Frederick Nietzsche. Um, I'm also thinking in terms of the Ubermensch with Darth Vader and the concept of slave mentality and master. He has a relationship with the emperor. Uh, now that's where I left off because of course I had to go to work and so forth. But um, I went to U Wikipedia and it was very tricky. I remember reading about the Ubermensch concept, specifically Nietzsche's concept of the Ubermensch and I remember the slave mentality, and I remember uh, slave morality and the concepts of good and bad, not the way we think of good and bad, but like aristocratic and common. Um, and it, it, it was, I only had a few minutes of break left, so uh, I, didn't, I couldn't spend that much time to uh, 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 thinking it through. Um, but I hope to revisit this sometime and so there. Um, so uh, thanks for your time. Thanks for watching this. Uh, thanks for making it this far in the video. Please like it uh, because I do, uh, please like it and consider subscribing to the whole channel because I do uh, make substantial videos and they're very thought provoking and uh, a lot, uh, they're not just food for thought, they're a meal for thought. <laughs> um, and uh, so consider subscribing. I think these videos are very worthwhile and I'm building up the look of this channel. Uh, sometimes, well, often I forget to put the subscribe and like things that usually pop up in these videos, um, you know, other channels, videos, um, but I am working on it and uh, I'm working on those thumbnails. It's just, it's a matter of time, I'm working two part-time jobs and so forth. Um, so I'll, uh, I'll, I'll talk to you next time. I hope you have a good day, a good week, and I'll see you next time. Bye.